Trap. <laughs> Okay, so I started a song that doesn't exist. You did. Uh, I was going to let you. It was remember when Jasmine and Guy had an album? So, if you want real loving, baby, try me. You oh, remember? And it was like no. a weird mixture of I'm Jasmine Guy, but I can't get rid of the accent I use on a different world. Try <laughs> yeah. sure, me. You got to look feet. Now, back to the bait. Mm. First but, of all, do you remember all of it? Because that's, that's another I level of do. Yeah, because I thought it was weird that when she did it and it was popular, there was an episode of a different world. It was the episode where um, Dwayne and Kinu were having their anniversary party and, Mm -hmm. you know, Whitley was trying to crash it and ultimately she becomes a maid. And that's when we're introduced to, um, we're not introduced to, but that's where Patti LaBelle comes back and, and, you know, they drop her prune cobbler and eventually it's the episode where Keanu and Dwayne break up. And, um, but I thought it was weird because in the party scene, they were mm-hmm. playing try me in the background mm-hmm. while we were in the scene. And even as a little kid, I was just like, I don't like the, <laughs> I don't like the fact that they're being this meta, like the person that sings the song in real life is in the scene, which means that if the song exists in that world, then Jasmine Guy has to exist in that world, which means Whitley can't coexist. And if she does coexist in the world that Jasmine Guy exists in, how is there not some sort of, you know who you look like? Like, you know, like that doesn't, it, oh, it's, so you're it, was whole, it was a whole artistic thing that I was having in my head at the time. So, there, so you're not, you're not giving shade that she was kind of like, shamelessly plugging her album no the the the, you know what's funny is that she essentially would have no control over that the producers are just like hey let's let's use this because we we have the person with us and she can give us permission to use it that's the first thing like you look for the cheap way out we need a Mm. party song jasmine guy just put out a party song let's go talk to the record company and jasmine guy and see if she'll let us use the song and because she's already on the show who's gonna say no to free publicity because that was publicity for her Right. I had issues with the fact that in that world, if, if we're going to say that in this world, at this college of Hillman, Jasmine Guy exists and it's popular enough to have a song that plays on the turntable or whatever, the DJ booth, in order to be able for people to be like dancing. And they were doing like that hard 90s dancing, like, hey, hey, <laughs> like they were doing <laughs> <laughs> like why 90s dancing you know that, that was like pure sweating at a party for, for real but but if 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 she existed enough if jasmine and i existed in that world and that means that whitley existed in that world which meant that like how do you listen these are only conversations that a, a, a writer at the age of however old on that episode like i should have known then that I was right. Yeah, and you probably should have had that. Should have that uh, <laughs> conversation with another writer because they would understand. Because I didn't see all of that. Um, you know, I just saw that. You know, she had an album out. She was trying to get those coins, and she was like, "Hey, while I'm at this one gig, let me like also put out my other gig stuff." But you know, we talk about this all the time, how people look at movies and just like, okay, this is real life. Or now you're saying you can't merge real life with movies. And, you know, I I think people don't realize how much power movies have on how we live. Like, okay, so don't judge me. I'm still watching The Crown. I know it's been out for like forever, ever. I'm in. People probably already know all. I, I mean, I just, you know. And then I'm, I am just, so this is uh, no spoiler alert. I am just now on the coronation, okay, of The Crown. So one of the things, though, that I was just watching today, and it was talking about how the queen was just like, okay, I want my husband to be the chairman of the coronation committee, which basically she was trying to appease him, you could tell. 
But uh, everybody was like, no, you can't do that because it's, it is tradition that the Duke of Norfolk and, you know, all these other people are supposed to be doing it. And they have like all these crazy traditions that they didn't want to break. What actually caught my eye was at one point of the coronation, the spouse has to come and like kneel in front of the newly coronated king or queen happened to be a queen. And he was just like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and she was just like, but I'm the queen. He's like, but you're my wife. Are, the, are you my wife or the queen? She said, I'm both. And he said, well, as the queen, you should give me an exception. And she was just like, no, you are supposed to do this to the queen. I can be your wife. And he was so, so the, up until this point, he wasn't feeling being first man. And while I was watching it, I was just like, who came up with gender specific tasks? In households and that is being displayed on like television and media and like who came up with that like when did they say you can't do this because you're a girl and you can't do this because you're a boy like who came up with that can we acknowledge that I'm not even sure how the segue that you had led into this although it is about to be the most riveting conversation ever that's well hilarious. because that's how my mind goes and yes, not even, that. Um, <laughs> and literally, I had that thought in the middle of it. I was just like, like, who told him a girl only a boy had to do this, or only a girl? Well, had to do this? It, oh, that's a good question. I've actually had a conversation with people about gender specified tasks because growing up in a society, especially in the South, oh. there are very specific things that little Southern girls are bred to know how to do like, or, yeah. or to do like you are bred to know that you're responsible for cooking and yeah. you're responsible for a clean house and you're responsible for the laundry and you, um, yeah. Why don't you go play that piano and show us how real it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you're responsible for making sure that the hair on the children are done and that they mm -hmm. look nice and this, that, and the other. And you're responsible for making sure that the husband is, you know, satisfied and this, that, and the other. And you have to look amazing while doing all of that. All of that. You have to look, you know, fantastic. That whole Stepford wife thing is very much a Southern culture type of thing. You know, that Donna Reed opening the door with the apron on and the pearls on, you know. Is it just in the South? Because I think, because I've seen some other, I've seen other movies and, and I'm, I'm going by movies because, you know, that's that's the basis of all. <laughs> that's, that's the basis of the conversation. I'm, I don't know. I, I know that, though, that in the South, it's a very real thing. It's a very like, real I don't, thing. I don't, I don't. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not something that's perpetuated in Northern cities. I'm just saying that when you grow, when you were born and bred in the Georgias and the Mississippis and the Alabamas, you, that is what is expected of you, you know, to be able to do now, you know, it's so funny because a lot of times our matriarchs, um, are unhealthy and yeah. overweight and exhausted and die at an early age because they try to maintain these unrealistic uh, jobs, like gender specific, <laughs> gender, they yeah. don't really like, right. Like, you know, like I got to cook, do the laundry, uh, make sure the kids is together, help them with the homework, uh, yeah. fold the laundry, make all the beds, pull make all sure the, the beds, put all the mess up yeah, right. The, the flowers are my job, right? But then the husband has to cut the grass. So it's just like, it's all the yard, right? So, 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 so I guess my issue, though, is then, then, you know, how much pressure are we putting on people through movies, your folk? When you you're just good like, for trying to blame us, okay? Because think about it. Think about how long it's been going on. How long you have seen those old school sitcoms where the couples sleep in two different beds, and the woman wakes up and she hands him his slippers and his, you know, and his uh, his newspaper and makes his bed. Like think about the fact that people watch that, and maybe they didn't grow up in a traditional household. This is all that they had to say, this is what a normal household looks like. Think about the, it's the stress and anxiety of people who like, you know, I, but I can't cook. But I'm allergic to grass and I can't cut the grass. <laughs> like, 
Like, what are we, what are we doing? What, I'm sorry. I, 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 I should I, say, what were we doing? What were yeah, we I would say, because they don't do that anymore. Like, it's no. just, I don't know. They, I don't know. I mean, but our generation came along. We're just like, no, he can do the laundry. Like, he can do it. <laughs> he can make his plate. <laughs> you know? Which yeah. is funny, because I honestly, I honestly think that that joint is still frowned upon in certain circles. No, because, sure. you know, I, I will never forget, right, right, if we're spilling tea today. Um, I, I had, our, I had our kids at home when they were very young, mm-hmm. um, after, you know, uh, when my son was, a was about to start kindergarten and he had aged out of the daycare. Mm-hmm. So we were in that weird year where he was, he was not in, in anything. And so I just basically homeschooled preschool for my four-year-old. The mm-hmm. issue with that was, is that I had a four-year-old, I had a baby Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she was one ish and I was pregnant with twins. So my Monday through Friday during the day was exhausting. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, you know, because, because hashtag the boyfriend was at work all day and then he had a, a second job that he was working. So he was doing that. So literally from like seven in the morning until midnight, I was at home, you know, right. it worked, you know, praise God that we're not in that now. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for the better jobs. Right. Right. But, but so by the time we got to the weekends, um, he would say to me, let me have, let me take the kids. Cause you've had them all week. Right. Right. You've been, you've been making breakfast all week. You've been making dinner. Let me take the kids. And I I would stay at home. Right. I would stay at home cause I'm big and pregnant with twins and sleepy Mm -hmm. and exhausted. Let me, you know, I would, uh, you know what? Okay, whatever. But I would stay home and I would rest. And even mm-hmm. when we would go to church, like he would, he would take them to like you know, the, the little Bible study class at the beginning. You know, he would do all of that and just let me chill out, right? Mm-hmm. Because after Sunday night, we're starting that whole cycle all over again. Let mommy have a break. We get to like May, um, and we're we're still in our routine and doing this or whatever. And I and by May is is when everybody knew that I was pregnant with twins because by that time I was really big. Before everybody like really didn't know what was going on, but now they knew. Mm-hmm. He was walking to the bathroom, I think, with either Ladybug or the boy. I can't remember which mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. And this woman passes him, and she was just like, "Oh, by the way, Happy Mother's Day to him." Oh, what? And he was just like, story. he was like, what did you say? He, she was like, well, I'm wishing you a happy Mother's Day since you always have the children. <laughs> See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, you know, for those of you all that don't know my husband, he got right with that hammer in the hallway at that moment because he wasn't having that because his whole thing was just like, you see three hours of our time. Right, right. In this in this context, as opposed to the other five days a week where my wife is is wrangling these children and taking them and taking her big pregnant self in and out of a car, you know. And even when Ethan started uh kindergarten, I was doing that. I was taking him to school, you know. Uh I was huge, y'all, trying to uh, you know, work around the steering wheel or the whole nine yards. Um, you know, and, and by the time you know, the whole story of how the twins got here and, you know, where they were born and all other stuff. But by the time I was actually, you know, doing that other run where I had two car seats in the back seat, ladybug was in the middle, uh, you know, Ethan was in the passenger seat and I'm getting car seats out. Like before. I'm doing that Monday through Friday every day. So even when the, everybody was here, all four kids were here, he was doing the same thing. And so it was, it was interesting to me that the most shade I got were from, from women. Up. Yeah. Oh, wow. were for women that were just like, you know, and it was almost like, how dare you? And that did, I thought in my head, I was like, well, that'll stop when they get older. People will see like, you know, they'll know that I'm home. We moved to a different city, different church, same shade. And I remember one time somebody actively made the comment. They were just like, well, you know, you know, if you, if you keep allowing your husband to like, you know, take care of the kids while you get a break, he's going to cheat on you. And I'm just like, 
Wow. I don't even understand how we made that connection. Like, because he's taking care of his own children. So it it is funny that you said that, that you get, you got the most shade from another female. And I think that's the same for men. Multiple women. Like I got, I I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. you. Um, Because I had some, not, you know, I had some shade. Um, when I was in private practice and all gone and, and some, and when I was traveling, well, and traveling, uh, for work, you know, it's a couple of people are just like, Oh, okay, well, well, how is he going to eat dinner? And, you know, and, you know, what is, you know, it's just like, wow. Okay. I don't even know if I even told him about it, but it would usually be at church. Mm-hmm. And, and I was just thinking, you know, this is, this is a self-sufficient, very independent male. Right. Uh, that I'm married to, and um, we have worked out this whole thing of me having to go to the hospitals or do whatever. What is it in your business? You know, <laughs> it's kind of what I want to say, but I couldn't always. Um, right. But you know, it isn't funny that the same thing happens to men, though. Um, so, like, you'll see it now, and it's more accepted. Thank you to your people in movies. Right. But stay at home dads and people that are just like like that talk about frowned upon talk mm-hmm. about frowned upon you know and how they don't dare that you kind of stay home and want to talk and want to take care of your children how dare you and you're just like oh, it's, it's okay you. like if that's and my whole thing is like it it would be different if like you were watching people you know, no shade, but I've seen situations where you're looking at the guy and he's staying home and you're looking at the woman and they do legit look miserable. Like I may, I may be like, okay, sis, like, are you, you cool? Like blink twice because, (laughs) you know, but there are other people that come up with, with these scenarios and they're fine. Like they're fine with it. So Think about what you just said. That doesn't necessarily mean, that doesn't have to, that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that he is home. It's just a fact that they have some dysfunction in their marriage. Like correct, that just, correct. Yeah. Like that, that just right, no, right, right. Exactly how it's right. manifesting. Yeah. yeah it's, it's only when really like, matter. now that being said, I have talked to someone and be like, you know, because apparently he don't think it's necessary to have a job. Like, I think at that point you, you know, there may no. be some conversations <laughs> that y'all yeah. need to have. You know what I mean? But, but it's all about what the couple wants to do. And, yeah. and, and I think that, that you're right. We put too much, we put too much emphasis on, you know, I, back when we were little, like, how dare we see a woman cutting the grass? Now I see it all the time. And I'm just like, Oh, that makes sense. Like if that's, you know, why, wait, 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 why? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I will pull the girl card on that though. I don't, I don't <laughs> you don't want to, I don't want to cut the grass. Like it's nasty. Like I it's stuff like flying on you and there's bugs and you're hot and sweaty. You bougie though. We already know that. We, that has been established in previous episodes. I don't know about that bourgeois <laughs> piece, but I do know that I don't want to sweat with particles flying on me, <laughs> and then have to like I'm just and y'all can judge. Judge McJudges me in the comments. I don't care. But so it's interesting that you said, um, you know, what about job? They I, in both both of our fields, both your field mm-hmm. and our, they job shame people too. There are gender specific jobs, gender specific roles. If you think about it, back in the day in Shakespeare's time, the girls couldn't actually even play the girls. Am I that right? Is correct. They weren't allowed to be the actors. A lot of people don't know that. Like Romeo and Juliet, there were no women on that in that play, in the original debut of that play. Shakespeare, that and, and especially in all of like Shakespeare's like comedies and romances, like it was all male acting team because women were not allowed to be on stage. That is true. Good for you yeah. doing research. I see no, but it's true. Um, because I'm, and let me tell you this: the reason why I'm looking at it, I'm, you know, 2020, we know it was this whole, this whole year with the whole COVID and everything. But one of the things that happened in 2020 was um, the wake up of race relations. Not the wake up. Uh, maybe I should say, you know, everybody's seeing it more. So diversity, equity, and inclusion is really being pushed in a lot of places that weren't being pushed before. So you really have to think about, okay, but why are we only letting people this age do this? And why are we only letting people with this gender do this? So like, even in my field, it was interesting. Um, you know, typically midwives were the ones that did the uh, the deliveries. And um, when physicians started doing them, you know, there's, you know, mainly male physicians, mm-hmm. not women physicians. And um, there, was, there, there were some men that would dress up as midwives 
um, to go and attend deliveries. People don't know that's back in the day history. So they could just get the experience. Um, and it's on the flip side now. People are just like, oh, I only want a female to deliver me. But let a male nurse walk in the door. Male nurses are great. All nurses are great. Hashtag All nurses. nurses. <laughs> All that. Um, but it's but funny. Another, but, I, but, I have seen, though, it, that's what's not, you know, when we were talking about in previous episode, the amount of times that, that Ladybug has been hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And so you run into every everybody, you know, and and it was always interesting to me because I knew of people that were just like, they only wanted the female nurses. They only wanted the female doctors. Mm -hmm. And their thinking was, is because they'll understand me. They'll be more compassionate. Right. And one of the things that I have learned in, in, in being a layman in this whole medical grand scheme of things is that the, you can find males that are just as compassionate, right. um, you know, and, and as we move into a different era, we, we have people that are, you know, non-binary, non conform they can be just as compassionate as you insisting on having this one you know person because I know in your field like I have friends like oh I don't I don't need nothing but a, a but a female uh OBGYN I'm just like but why though like no but I've seen the opposite I don't want no really down there yes <laughs> oh yes God. I have I, don't, I have never seen yes. that I, the most I've seen I remember um, the shock on people's faces when I was very satisfied with, cause the, 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 the twin, well, mm -hmm. actually now that I think about it, all oh, of my children were delivered by, uh, male physicians. All of them. They were all incredible. And every time I would like refer, like, you know, and the doctor and he, and they were just like, wait, you had a man. I was like, well, the, the goal is for the baby to make it from the inside to the outside. Why am I care? It could have been Same a robot, please. like legit. Safely. It could have been a robot yeah. and it would not have mattered because the, the safe delivery is what mattered from right. the inside to the outside safely. That's all I care about. You, That's you, as, as long as you, uh, understand the, uh, the basics <laughs> of what that means to make sure that I'm alive and they're alive, whatever. So how are you teaching that to your kids though? Like this next generation could, and that, that being said, my generation, I think is still in the gender specific. I know my generation, some people, not all, are still mm -hmm. having difficulty transitioning into recognizing other people's pronouns. Just everything is is very different, and uh, because we've been taught, like you know, right. blue is for, pink is for, taking out the garbage is for, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know so how do we move forward and how do we learn and maybe i shouldn't say your kid maybe i should say how do you teach the old people well i i don't i can't you know listen what do i say i have a motto i i'm raising children i'm not raising grown folk like just, oh, yeah. <laughs> i don't i don't raise grown-ups right and and while if i am in a space where i feel like there needs to be a correction made right um because we talk about it and we hint at it all the time on this show like we're we're going to be respectful of how people um, live their lives, which yeah. I think is, is necessary. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I'm going to ensure that as, as long as I'm in a space where I feel like people need to be respected for who they are, then we're going to respect them. Right. Yeah, um, with my children though, I'm like, my whole thing is I just need to raise you so that when you're living alone, you can survive and not die. Like that's where my head is at. Like, let's like, I don't care what is considered what, who should do what, you gonna know how to cook, do laundry, keep a lawn, keep a house, clean your house. Because when you move out, I need for you to be able to do all of those things so that you're not moving back home with no, me. <laughs> no, 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 no. You only have to know how to work a phone. No, I know how to cook. You just need to know how to do Grubhub, eat. Or mm -hmm. You just don't want them to starve. How they decide to do that, that's on them. Listen, let me tell you something. That is that is that is not true. Okay, wait, you wait, at wait. least work need to know how to boil really? some water. <laughs> work and follow and directions on the back of the ramen packet. Like okay, 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 okay. We'll okay. Do that. Like we'll you, do that. I there because eventually there. You know when the money is low especially depending on what you want to do. And I got a couple of jokers in here that want to be creatives. So you need to learn how to cook, boo, on a, on a $25 grocery budget. <laughs> a <laughs> month. <laughs> a dollar a day. That's all you get. A a dollar, dollar, you dollar need a to know how to make your white rice pop 
Mm. If you want to be a creative, you need to know how to keep the art. Now, eventually, when you get to the point where you can use your smartphone to hire people, good for you. But you still need to know how to do it yourself. Because if you don't know how to do it, you won't know that you're getting shafted if they're not doing it right. Be like, fam, why are you cutting the lawn so low? It's, it's not going to grow. Like, you need that to know that. Southern, Southern culture is like a completely different show. People don't even realize. And I feel it like you have some oh. people that are going to comment about it comment about anything it's fine but that's yeah peace. yeah we want you to comment about anything but yeah no that southern charm it's it's real but i think also too <laughs> like there's a part of it where i'm just like i'm so glad we grew up in that culture i mean because why i just am i i think i think that being said i think we had a balance of both in in uh when we were how we were raised our 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 parents they were they were very they were very very gender specific gender, they were gender specific but there were times when um for instance breakfast was daddy's thing like that was daddy's that was daddy's yeah. joint right during like week, for sure. during yeah. during the week when when mama was having to get ready and she was done doing our hair or whatever that other she was having yeah, yeah. breakfast that is how we got the term um, french toast it's oh, on the yeah. table you remember he would yell that up the stairs he would make it and then he would yell up the stairs it's on the table like that's how we knew <laughs> and we would come downstairs and that joker would have it set listen this is how you know that i love you the most daddy because gina doesn't remember <laughs> but i remember that this is how you would tell us that no, breakfast was no, ready. No, no, no. <laughs> Because I, I love you more. I am a favorite. No, I remember how good the French toast tasted, but I don't remember. But Danita, we were like, we were not, I don't think he was doing that when I was he there. He was, you have a terrible memory. When you were in high school and I was in elementary school and we would be getting ready, how we would know that breakfast was ready is that daddy would yell up the stairs. It's on the table. That is, that was his thing. It's on the table. That's how you knew. And he would, and he would say it, and you would come downstairs, and and he would have plates made. He would. I remember that. That, that is where we got the presentation. Where if he had like made eggs and like and like and like you know uh, turkey bacon or whatever, and and like like all of it would be on a center plate, and then you I would remember sit, that, and then you would get what you wanted on that center. That, Listen, that. that right there though, mm -hmm. that whole, and he was very northern. Like you know, Mama was a Southern belle, and he was the the northern guy. But that wasn't, that wasn't, you know, that was not a gender specific thing. It was just like, no, but you know, I forgot about that because when she would cook, she would put all four plates together and she would make each person. She would plate. make each person's plate. Yes. Yeah. I forgot that that whole, put the eggs in the middle and the sausage around the edges. I forgot. Which that that I do. <laughs> When I make breakfast, I'll do that. That is how I present breakfast, which is so funny because a lot of people, they're like, oh, you got that from your mom? It's like, no, I got that from my dad. Mama taught me how to cook chicken. Daddy taught me how to cook eggs. Like it was, so I guess in coming up, I never saw like cooking in the house as being like a woman's thing. Right. That joker can throw to you. You want some good macaroni? Listen, you want some good macaroni? Our dad. Murphy Burgers. Murphy Burgers. Yeah. Listen. Listen. Good listen. Good. Yeah, you're right. I guess it wasn't as gentle. We, did, we didn't have. I was, thinking, I was thinking more of the cutting the grass. If we go like on a long trip, he would drive. <laughs> he I opened the doors for us. Did we want her to drive though? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think she always drove like 100 miles an hour. Always. In, like a distance of 20 feet. Because we went to a, a 7-Eleven or something, or I can't remember, some convenience store by the house. And we had to go by there before I went to school. And she was driving. And she pulled up in the parking lot. And I walked inside. And the woman uh, uh, who was doing the register, she was dying laughing. <laughs> and we were like, what's wrong with you? She's like, I have never seen where a, a mom and her daughter drive up. The mom is driving. And the daughter looks like she fears her life. Because apparently I was like this. Because she was, she just rolled, like she would whoosh, just roll up into the parking space. And just like, we're about to die, like right now. Yeah. But she was the one where, when, when we were learning how to drive stick shifts, you know, daddy taught us. Because I don't know if you ever remember when she would drive, that hammer would go from like first to fifth. 
with it's a kind of like, ease like I've never only that a race car driver would be able to accomplish like and for anybody that has ever driven a manual first to fifth is nearly impossible to I think she would yeah I think she she would I, I never saw her go first to fifth but I, I she would do it her. a lot she I would, saw her she skip would, but now I might, I might have gotten that from her because I would skip second a lot I I skip second a lot. She would not bang with second or third. Like she was just like, no, those are just. And I would say, I was like, what are you doing? She's like, no, this is just your start off gears. <laughs> <laughs> them just your start off. Oh gears. my goodness! I was like, we're gonna die today. Today, so, we didn't yeah. have. We didn't have. We other than like the grass. We, the grass. We, we, it was very equal opportunity. In yeah, our house. I think we didn't. I don't think we really realized it. I don't think they realized it. They, if we interviewed our dad, he would have probably thought that they were very kind of like, "This is what the man does. This is what the woman does." And that's never. Mm-hmm. I remember him vacuuming and mopping, and he did. Mm-hmm. In the kitchen, also, I should say that I remember him doing they're that. Both. Yeah, they both yeah. definitely did. Yeah. That big Kirby. Mm. It's probably he was probably back in me because he was the only one that could candle that giant. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was great, like ninety pounds. That's the heaviest. It was like eight hundred pounds. Oh my goodness! It was. Yeah, no, was you horrible. had you had guns after you got done with that joint. But yeah, we we that's how we grew up, and I think that's probably why we approach it differently. Or, or two, when you're raising daughters, and, and I think it's important when you're raising any child, you should mm-hmm. empower them to feel like they can do anything. And we were raised in a, in an environment where we did not feel like we were limited to anything. Right. You know? And that. and even with him, with, with daddy, he was very insistent that even with us driving, like we had to know how to change the oil and how to change the tires. And we were supposed to. I got triple A now. I got, I learned that lesson, daddy, because I love you the most. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> what is our seed of substance? I don't know where this conversation started oh. or how it ended, but it was great. <laughs> seed of substance. Um, whoever has the skill set should do the task. Hey, girl, you better go ahead on. Whoever has the skill set should. Whoever do has the skill set, do it. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> But I can't lie, the furniture that is picked out in our house, I didn't do it. And that's nice furniture, too. Yes, well, because I didn't do it. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I'm your sister, I know. Good job. I don't have that skill set. Good job, brother in love. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Not the current furniture that everybody sees behind you, because we all know that that's not real. Okay. Telling my business. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I, and, and we missed our seed of substance. Uh, move. We got to do better. We're a little rusty. Oh. It's been a little while. Wait. Wait, why am I? Yeah. This is a dance. Mm-hmm. 90s dance. I know. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> having bring wipes to the club. <laughs> So I can pair of clothes because they sweated it out. Oh my like, why are you sweating? We was dancing. Too much. It's too much. Too much. Where your water at? I don't have any. Look it at you. Weird with the... Oh, I guess I shouldn't show the brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Too late now. Yeah, we won't get sued. There's no paid advertisement in this YouTube. Not now. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, girl. Bye, girl. Bye, girl.